next, Tommy, we've got Kenny Maloney and Sophie Maloney. <laughs> I'm Kelly. You're Kelly. Hello. How are you, Kelly? Nice to meet you. Have a seat there. Sophie. And Sophie, <laughs> how are you? I'm good, thank you. Where are you from? Uh, London. London with <laughs> Irish parents. All right. And. Well, she's got Irish grandparents. Yeah. Yes. Why. <laughs> uh... <laughs> so, why would you be here? If that's not an awful question to ask, but. Uh... I think you invited me to talk to me. <laughs> It's, yeah, but uh, <laughs> who, who are you and, and, and what ha have you done? Or... What have I done? Um, I used to work in uh, the sports world. Oh, my Jesus Christ. <laughs> I can have you now. <laughs> uh, am I able to use the other name? You can use okay. the other name. Of course you can. Uh, it used to be Frank. That's it, yes. Frank Maloney, the boxing promoter. That's it. Wow. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I have you now. <laughs> Um, when did you change over? Um, <laughs> you mean when did I have it cut off? <laughs> have you had it cut off? Yes, yes. Yeah. What did you do with it? <laughs> I tried to have it replanted, but no one will take it. Do they? What do they do with those when, when they've got and they've chopped them off? <laughs> they reshape it. <laughs> no, but like. Oh, do they, they, they take it and they turn it into... A vagina. And it's amazing what they can do these days. <laughs> <laughs> like... I sp I'm thinking of all the things to try and make into a vagina, there could have been other bits. Like, <laughs> About now? <laughs> like a peach or something, or... <laughs> d just different bits of fruit. Yeah, you, just, you know, a bit things. of mango or something. Mm. Or a man, don't go. Anyway. <laughs> so, um, uh, they, so they, they, they took it off. <laughs> I was it's... asleep when they done it, so I don't know what they'd done, so... Yeah, but you checked afterwards, though, didn't you? <laughs> well, it took me two weeks to look in the mirror first. Wow. Can you tell us the story of, of that whole thing? Yeah, I suppose... Obviously, I was born to um, Irish parents. My father was from Ross Gray, my mother's from County Wicklow. Um, from the age of three, I, I sort of felt different to other boys. Um, but obviously, having a father that was very sport minded, yeah. um, very Irish and old fashioned in his ways, it was very hard to explain that. I didn't know what it was. And it wasn't until I was about 15, 16, I read an article, and then I read this article and I thought, shit. This is me. I'm a, I'm a trans, transsexual. But how do I explain this to my parents? How do I explain this to everybody? Because by then I'd been playing football, I'd been boxing. And um, I read this story about April Ashley, and then I read a story about Caroline Crossley, who was a transgender woman who was in the Bond movies. And I read how the papers totally destroyed them. And, and I just said, do you know what? I will never admit to this. I will fight this till the day I die. And, um, and I did, and I di but it got harder and harder. And I think when my father died, I felt as much... I, I love my dad dearly, and I had so much respect for him, and he had me on a pedestal, so it was very hard to tell him I wasn't the person he thought I was. Um, and when he died, it seemed like a weight off my shoulders. And um, I, was, I was more or less start to be my, be myself um, and I started sort of transitioning very slowly. Um, what was the the thing of when you're saying that you and you're going to fight this until you die that sense of uh, I'm going to keep it to myself uh, what was your sexual attraction who is who? No, I had a I had, I had a beautiful wife, a partner. Obviously, the mother of Sophie. Um, we're still very good friends. But when I told her, that was the hardest thing I ever had to do, um, other than telling my children, because the fear of rejection from everybody, the fear of losing your children, is so strong. You know, and I attempted suicide a couple of times because I feared losing everything. But I was very lucky. You know, the day I told Tracy. 
I knew my marriage was over, but she sat and she said, look, I'll help you through this and I'll help the children understand. And I'm, you know, touch wood, we've, um, we've remained very good friends. Who uh, are you sexually attracted to? Is it men or women? Do you know what? I don't know. I'm we have this conversation all the time. We have this conversation. <laughs> I actually got dumped by a trans man the other day. Can you believe it? <laughs> I've I, never I, been dumped in my life. I believe, I believe so that offended. was an Literally so offended, aren't you? <laughs> I'm so offended. I never got dumped, ever. Can you tell me about your vagina? Oh. <laughs> what do you want to know about it? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, tell me what you want to know about it. Um... <laughs> Uh, would you, if if somebody had uh, sex with you, would are, are, do you have sensations yes. inside yourself? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But did they, uh, in terms of orgasm, were they able to the help you in any way or something? Yeah. Like? The doctors, the doctors that done it was very good. The surgeon. Yeah, I have a fully functional vagina. You know that that's going to be the. <laughs> <laughs> I can't give birth, though. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's <laughs> going to be the trailer they use for the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's uh, amazing. Um, not, not, not the vagina thing, I mean, your... <laughs> your... That courage. Um, can you tell me what it was like from your perspective? Uh, yeah. um, I mean, it was very weird. It's still weird now, even we're sitting here talking about my dad's vagina, so that's weird in itself. <laughs> but the whole... <laughs> the whole my thing... fucking new vagina! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the whole thing was... I don't know. I, obviously, I was a bit younger, so it was quite embarrassing for me. The first thing I felt was embarrassing, I think, for my friends and things like that. And then, obviously, the more we spoke about it, it became emotional because it was obviously it was upsetting about how upset you was about it and then it just become quite normal now it's just quite normal it was the the idea of it worse than the actuality way worse yeah yeah the idea of it was horrible and i did only get told a little bit before the story came out so it wasn't like i had a long time to prepare for it it was like i knew and then the whole world knew and i was like i, I don't know what to say to everyone and as a little girl Grown up, and the way uh, little girls have, you know, could have great memories yeah. of their dad, and their dad being this, you know, I one of the things I love about my dad, and this, I have a great sense memory of the smell of him. Yeah. As I was growing up, and the smell of your dad, yeah. and getting a hug from your dad. Yeah. And was everything then thrown in? Yeah. All that thrown into dad. That was hard because I still have all their memories, but obviously, where my dad was a boxing promoter, I had. It wasn't just a, everyone looks up to their dad, don't they? But I had this great role model who I thought was absolutely amazing. And it was difficult to lose him. And everyone kept saying to me, you're not losing your dad, but you are losing your dad because, I mean, we don't speak like I would speak to Frank anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. So it is very, very hard. But, I mean, there are similar things. So it's not like you've completely lost your dad, but it is difficult, yeah. Like, to be fair, I'm just not scared of you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not kind of unusual because you're you're still the same person. Yeah, I, I always say that um, all I've done is changed the air to wrapping. I've not had a brain transplant. I've not. Um, but I, I, I also think I'm a sort of a quieter person than I used to be um, because obviously the world I was in, the louder you were and the more outrageous you was the more you went up the ladder, you know, and I and I managed a world heavyweight champion and four other world champions, you know, and some very good fighters. So I was sort of the top of my my business. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, if I'm honest, I was a very arrogant little fucker. Can I swear? Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> I was, you know, very, very arrogant, very... Um, not, I would never take no for an answer. Um, every day I got up, it was a battle. Uh, it was a battle with who I was negotiating with, the likes of Don King, uh, Bob Arum, people yeah. like that. But it was also a battle with myself, you know, no, and that's what no one ever saw. So the more outrageous I was and the more outspoken I was, I could hide this side of myself. And 
you know, I used to look in the mirror at myself and I used to think in the morning, who can I beat up today? Who can I... Who can I actually fuck today? I mean, literally, in business terms. <laughs> um, now I look in the mirror and I'm very happy, I'm very contented and I'm very relaxed. You know, obviously, I know the stress I've caused my, my family, but, you know, thankfully, they've sort of come on the journey with me and um, they've been very accepting and very mm. understanding. Um... When you're introducing people <laughs> to your family, yeah, uh, how how does that go? It's a tricky one, but we are quite. We just make a joke out of it, don't we? Like yeah. I just call you dad still, don't I? Yeah. People people always say, um, oh, your mum's nice, or, and I'm like, no, that's not my mum. Like I've got a mum. And this is my dad. We do it in shops, don't we? Yeah. We do it all the time. <laughs> like, I'll be over the other side of the room holding up a dress and I'm like, Dad, <laughs> this is a nice one for you. And everyone's like, hmm? <laughs> what is going on here? <laughs> so, no, I just introduce I'm like, this is Dad in a dress. Yeah. <laughs> and they just get on with it. They're fine. Everyone around... I, like, I have friends that, you know, know the situation, accept it, and if they don't, then they're not my friends or family, really. Yeah. Um, and then I always... Kind of think about people who are doing something as uh, phenomenal and brave as you're doing, and the notion that we all have of "I'd be happier if," expecting all your troubles to have gone. How do you cope with the reality of that all human beings suffer all a lot of the time? Now, I don't think it was brave what I'd done. I think it, it was something that's a necessity. If I hadn't done it, and pe you know, unless you're unless you're born with a gender dysphoria, you'll never understand it. It wasn't my life. It was as if I was getting out of bed, putting on this suit, and I was on the stage being an actor. Now I get out of bed, and I'm the real person. I, I am really me, and you know, I, I don't have no regrets. Um, I've got a family life. I've got a life that I never had before. So I, I think I'm a match. Nicer person and softer, so that's probably the difference. Yeah. There are people, and there will be people, um, who feel like that. Y young people who are watching the television show tonight or whatever age it might be. What um, advice can you give them or what might you say to them? Well, if they're young, I think it's... I would say to if the parents, I would say to the parents, don't encourage it, don't discourage it. And I do work with a lot of young trans people. I have a lot of parents phone me up. Um, and I just say, let them just develop themselves because you, as they grow, they may change. So it's best to just let them find their self. OK. And then if they are true, got gender dysphoria, it will come out. And all I can say to the parents is, that's, you know, support that child, help yeah. that child, because they're going to go for a hard time until they actually get to where they want to get to and um, just show them love and kindness and, and be there for them. And in that situation, no matter how much the parents might be suffering uh, watching their child, nobody's in more pain than the child themselves in terms of... Well, this journey is not just about me. You know, when, when I first transitioned, it was always... Taught, and, I, you know, I had to correct her. This journey was about my, my children, my ex-partner, my 80... At the time when I transitioned, my mother was 82. You know, met eighty-two year old yeah. Irish Catholic woman, you know. But she was she was actually the best out of everybody. She was so supportive, so loving and so she actually went to a local church and told the parish priest what was going on and said, If Kelly comes to church with me and you're rude, I will stop coming to church. You know, and for because yeah. uh, you know, she's from very the old school. Yeah. She goes to church every day. She prays for everyone in the world. Um so and I you know, and and I thought if my mother can accept that and, you know, and her words was, do you know what? No matter what you do, you're my child. No matter, you know, yeah. I may not agree with what you've done, but you're my child. I brought you in this world and I'm here to protect you and love you. And I thought that was so nice. It's, it's gorgeous thing to say. Amazing. Um, it's a, a wonderful story, isn't it? I mean, I know you've lived it and it's had uh, what I imagine is trauma. Uh, yeah. But there's something... Uh, beautiful about it as well and thank you so much uh, for coming on to the show thank you for um,
and sharing it with us. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Kelly and Sophie Maloney. <laughs> See you in the third half.